Welcome to Team 4's Change Model presentation. In this presentation, we'll discuss the III model and the easier approach. Let's jump right into the first change model created by Michael Fullen. Michael Fullen is a worldwide authority on educational reform. He currently serves as the Director of New Pedagogies for Deep Learning and is a former Dean of the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. He believes in schools, the main problem is not the absence of innovations, but the presence of too many disconnected, piecemeal, superficially adorned projects. Fullen's model, the Triple I Change Model, endeavors to create a much more connected process to introducing change, specifically in educational environments. One way to visualize Fullen's model is with three overlapping circles consisting of the model's three phases, initiation, implementation, and institutionalization. Initiation is the first phase and primarily considers what needs to be put in place in order for the change to be successful. Discussions and establishment of buy-in with stakeholders occur in this stage as well. The second phase, implementation, is when the change is carried out and constructive and supportive feedback loops are created to guide and improve the change initiative. The last phase, institutionalization, occurs after the implementation has become routine. It is at this stage that school leadership determine whether the change has met its intended purpose, and if so, implement necessary organizational reforms to promote sustainability of the initiative. However, it is important to recognize that the Fullen model has a narrow focus when it comes to change initiatives in educational environments. This alternative visualization of the model by Fullen demonstrates how at the center of any change initiative should be a constant focus on two outcomes, improving student learning and improving organizational capacity to better support learning. If the desired outcome of your change initiative does not fit under these categories, this is not the model for you. On the next few slides, we'll look at the factors and impact of each of these phases. Initiation looks at several factors similar to other human performance improvement models. Initiation is impacted by organizational environmental factors, such as community pressure involvement, funding, and teacher attitudes towards the change and access to innovations. Some questions to consider in the initiation phase. How will we communicate with all stakeholders the goal of the innovation and the processes and strategies for achieving them? How will we help constituents understand the rationale and urgency for the innovation? What resources have been made available to support the initiation and implementation? When planning for implementation of the change initiative, a similar holistic approach is taken. First, we look at the characteristics of the change itself. Three areas of concern are the practicality, complexity, and need for the change. Next, we look at local factors, such as the school district and individual teachers. Lastly, we look at external factors that may impact the change initiative, such as government oversight agencies and applicable federal laws. Some questions that you need to consider in the implementation phase are, what conditions are needed to support the implementation? How are we giving feedback and ongoing professional learning to those implementing and leading the change? What behaviors and practices do we expect to see at the early stage, mid-stage, and in full implementation? When planning for the institutionalization of a change initiative, there are two steps. First, you must determine whether the change is worthwhile enough to continue after implementation has run its course. Assuming it is, organizational changes are implemented to promote sustainability of the initiative. Some questions to consider in the institutionalization phase. How widespread is the implementation? Where do gaps remain? Have practices become routine behavior in nearly every classroom? How do we know? How will we be able to sustain the change over time? Recall as we discussed in the beginning of the presentation, the Fullen model is engineered to focus on two specific outcomes of any change initiative in the educational environment. Did the change have a positive impact on student learning? And has the school itself made adjustments to grow the capacity necessary to continue to improve student learning? These are the measures of success that any change initiative will be measured against in this particular model. Now let's discuss a practical example of Fullen's model of change in action. A school has decided to implement a new initiative to crack down on gang recruitment by encouraging closer parental and community involvement. Assuming the initiator is a school principal, he or she would have to examine factors associated with initiation. 
For example, winning over stakeholders like teachers, examining existing programs innovations, and access to said programs. Following which, upon choosing a particular program to engage in, let's say a compulsory after-school program for at-risk youth, the initiator will have to monitor progress of the after-school program and establish feedback loops with leaders of the program to keep it aligned with the intended outcomes. Eventually, assuming the initiative's implementation has reached a steady state, the initiator will push ahead and institutionalize changes by making it a part of the school's core services and ensuring teachers have the resources and training to sustain the change. This concludes our presentation of Fullen's change model. Please take a look at the additional questions found in this forum to engage with this model further. Now we will discuss our last model, the easier approach. This change model was created by David Husey, an international renowned corporate planning expert who has published numerous change management books for the business environment. Husey's easier model was introduced in his book, How to Manage Organizational Change. This book is in its second edition, most recently published in the year 2000. The easier approach model is notable for providing a framework for real collaboration between management and the staff most affected by the change. The model focuses on empowering staff, acknowledges the difficulty of change, and provides support for those that need it. The model also reminds the user of the importance of recognizing and rewarding success throughout the change effort. Also worth noting, the name of the model is an acronym, which stands for Envision, Activate, Support, Implement, Ensure, and Recognize, and operates much like a checklist. On the next two slides, we'll discuss the key features of each step. Envision. The Envision stage. This is when the vision is communicated and should be motivational and inspire staff. Activate stage. The staff is encouraged to get on board with the change. If activating the staff is not successful, QC suggests that management may need to use coercion to achieve results. Support stage. Leadership should work directly with staff throughout the change process. Leaders need to be authentic in their support to keep the trust and confidence of the staff. Implement stage. It will be necessary to establish new policies and make sure that staff understand the reasons for and ramifications of the change. At this stage, the actual change initiative will be rolled out and instituted. Ensure stage. Active monitoring of progress and making adjustments to the plan as necessary reinforces the vision and creates a responsive and adaptable change process. Recognize stage. Recognizing the work that has been done will reinforce the vision yet again. The recognition stage is similar to that of support as it puts the staff in the spotlight. Staff may receive incentives or rewards in the form of promotions, celebrations, or expressions of thanks in order to gain and maintain support for the change initiative. Now let's discuss a practical application of the easier model. A theater company's educational department has been touring local inner city schools annually for the last eight years and performing abridged Shakespeare plays as part of its community outreach efforts. Leadership has decided to expand the program beyond just performing plays to creating theater programs in schools that provides opportunities for students to participate in the arts. Now let's go through each step of the easier model for the scenario. Envision is the first step. Leadership and management meet to discuss the idea and the goals of the change. Activate. Management meets with the education department to explain the change, how staff will be included as part of the process, and what they hope to achieve to garner buy-in from critical stakeholders. Support. Management empowers staff to share their ideas and use this change as an opportunity. All staff concerns are met with understanding and efforts are made to help guide the staff through the change. Implement. This is when the new program is put into action. Management develops the budget and seeks funding to support the new program. Staff works with school administration and teachers to coordinate the delivery of the new program, and production departments supply additional sets, props, and costume pieces for the program. Ensure. Staff rehearses the program before working with the students. Any needed adaptations or changes are made so that way the play and the program itself will run smoothly with the added student participation. Recognize, students have the opportunity to perform for their peers and family. Leadership from the theater company brings online a new community engagement department as a result of the change and creates job opportunities for staff that help to create the program. This concludes our presentation 
of Husey's easier change model. Additional questions are provided in the forum to engage this topic further. Thank you for watching.